Hi, my name is Tria. I've just graduated from Oxford Medical School and I'm starting as a doctor in London soon. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the books you should read to get into medical school. The first book I'd like to talk about is Bad Science by Ben Goldacre. This is one of those staple books that I think all prospective medical students should read. It's an amazing book that teaches you how to critically analyse news articles and scientific papers. Often headlines can be misleading and this book gives you the tools to see which ones are phony and which ones are not. If you've already started thinking about this, then that makes you a really good prospective candidate and you're bound to impress people at interview. So the next book I want to talk about is called Direct Red, A Surgeon's Story by Gabrielle Weston. So this is a book about being a female surgeon in a male-dominated profession. In this book, she talks about her struggles and her triumphs, and she has some really relatable content. I'm always shocked when I read the statistics about how many female surgeons there are in the UK. I recommend this book for people of all genders, especially women. Even if you're not considering surgery, I think you should read this book and have a think about it. So the next book I want to talk about is A Language of Kindness by Christy Watson. Watson is a nurse who's worked in the NHS for over 20 years. I think it's really important for people who want to be doctors to read about people from other allied healthcare professions, such as nursing, psychology, and many more. Sometimes at medical school interview, if the interviewer is feeling particularly mean, they might ask you why you want to be a doctor and not these other professions. So I think it's useful to have thought about it. And one of the ways to do that is by reading books like this. So the next book I want to talk about is called Also Human by Caroline Elton. She is an occupational psychologist who works with doctors. This book is about the doctors that she's cared for during her career. The author is a big advocate of seeing doctors as humans with emotions and baggage that can impact their care in both positive and negative ways. So chapter 7 is a really interesting chapter in this book. She talks about how doctors from ethnic minority backgrounds are disadvantaged in the NHS. She explores a concept called differential attainment, which is where these doctors perform worse in exams for many reasons, including systemic racism. I think this book gives a really good introduction on this important topic. So the next book I want to recommend is When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. This is a well-written memoir written by Paul Kalanithi, who is an Indian-American neurosurgeon who battles his own diagnosis with terminal cancer. It's a really candid description of what it's like to experience a terminal illness, especially as a healthcare professional. So I never normally cry at books, but the epilogue had me in tears. It's written by Lucy Kalanithi, who's Paul's wife and also a doctor. She supported him through everything, and it's really nice to hear her voice at the end of the book. So the next book I want to talk about is Invisible Women by Caroline Priado Perez. In this book, she reveals how gender bias exists in every aspect of our lives. Now, the whole book isn't directly related to medicine, but she has a few chapters on how gender bias exists within healthcare and scientific research. For example, she talks about how pregnant women are routinely excluded from clinical trials, and as a result, there isn't that much information about what's safe for them and what's not. This is called the gender data gap. She's got lots more studies about this, so I really recommend everyone read it. So the next book I want to talk about is called Did He Save Lives by David Selu. David Selu is a consultant surgeon in the NHS. He was wrongfully sent to jail for 15 months after the death of a patient he was involved with. So this book talks about the toxic blame culture which exists within the NHS and how that impacts doctors' mental health and well-being as well as patient care. It's a really heartbreaking book to read, but it's also important to understand the gravity of dealing with life and death and also how the NHS is an imperfect system. David Selu also talks about his experience about being a black doctor going through this process. He asks himself, would the outcome have been different if he was white? And the answer is yes. The next book I want to talk about is Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. To be honest, I recommend all of Atul Gawande's books. He is an Indian American surgeon who's written many books about medicine and Being Mortal is a good one to start with. It's one of those classical medical student reads and for a good reason. In the book, Gawande talks about how old age is medicalized. He uses a series of graphs to describe how patterns of health decline have changed over the years with modern medicine. So if you're thinking of applying to Oxford or Cambridge, it's highly likely that you'll get given a graphic interview to discuss. So this is a really good book to have read before your interview so you get an idea of how to read and interpret graphs. So the next book I want to recommend is one that you've probably all heard of. It's This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. So this is one of those classic books that have inspired many doctors to start writing themselves. There's also a BBC show and a tour which I recommend you checking out as well. It's a hilarious book filled with crazy stories about medicine 
But on top of that, Kay also discusses his personal journey with medicine and why he chose to leave the profession. Medicine isn't a conveyor belt that starts at medical school that you just stay on until the end of your career. In fact, it's something that you can move in and out of and change. So I think it's important to have the perspective of someone who's left the profession as well. So the last book I want to recommend is a fiction book. It's called Elizabeth is Missing by Emma Healy. I really think there is a place for fiction in medicine, especially books that deal sensitively and well with illness. So this book is about a woman with dementia who's trying to investigate the disappearance of her friend. The interesting thing about this book is that it's written from her perspective and as the book progresses her dementia gets worse and as a reader you experience this with her. For example, the narrator sometimes forgets certain words such as fork. So instead of using the word fork, she'll say sharp pointy thing. So as the reader, you only really know as much as she knows. Now I won't spoil what happens in the end, but it's a really interesting take on dementia. It's a great book that explores the realities of living with dementia and also the impact this has on friends and family. So those are the books that I recommend. Obviously there are many more out there. If you want an idea of what to read, a lot of universities publish reading lists for medical students, which I recommend you check out. My main advice would be to make sure that you're reading from authors of different genders and ethnicities and keeping your mind open. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.